and Ashley. Um, so please, I challenge all of you to join us for the whole entire 10 weeks. It's going to be awesome. We have great teachers with great experiences and giving us all knowledge in every aspect of business that Jennifer has put. So it's awesome. Um, thank you guys for coming. So week two, a round of applause for you guys. I'm Justin. I'm Morgan. I'm not even sure. And where the market is. <laughs> and Morgan and Morgan's gonna talk about the laws of visual expression. So show and tell is better than just tell. <laughs> um, you could rely hundred percent on your voice to communicate a message. Um, if you think of like the height of radio days, it's strictly auditory and verbal messages. Um, but they would use things like music, sound effects, and words to really paint the picture of what they're trying to tell you. So it's not just like listening to a voice. It was other um, enhancements to help tell the story. So what are some ways to, visual ways to enhance items like a listing presentation, maybe a client pitch, your social media posts? What do you guys think? Liz? Uh, what was the question? Did we do a song and dance? I mean, you could do a song and dance, like a TikTok video. What are some other ways? What are some ways to enhance a listening presentation so someone's not just bored listening to you, like, ramble on? Have pictures. Yes, exactly. So you can use pictures. You can show, like, past clients. Um, and just really get the point across of what you're trying to explain. So it's not just a bunch of words on the screen. Um, no, uh, like visual ways to enhance what you're trying to say. So you can use music, you can use sound effects, you can use animations, photos um, to explain what you're trying to say. Um, you could use only your voice, but you want someone just like sitting there listening to you and then it kind of just gets like lost in their head and it's not really getting your point across. So um, like photos and videos are a great way to help that. So this is actually the video that we use to um, share the... <laughs> Yeah, that was cute. Yeah. That was creative. Um, so there's sound effects that was not actually Haven walking across the floor. <laughs> um, and then there's animations. So it just makes it like a little bit more interesting. There's animations in the background of the animations. Um, the music that we use was a purposeful voice. Um, it's just kind of like the lightheartedness of the video. So if we use some like human wheel music, or type of the video, it wouldn't. We will be teaching the laws of visual communication and storytelling. So we hope to see you well, all there. All kinds of different ways to enhance what you're trying to say. But the, the animations and the music just make it a little bit more interesting to look at, and it'll catch your attention when you're scrolling. We live in a culture full of images. Um, if you think about like all of the memories that you have um, in photograph form, you think of the TV shows that you grew up watching, maybe your favorite movies, um, a world full of images. So movies, DVDs are not so much used anymore, but DVDs and VHS tapes were big at one point. Um, photographs, television, videos, and right now I think um, this new generation, social media is really like the visual medium of today's age. Um, Everywhere you look, you really can escape video and photos. Um, and John Maxwell even points out that most people don't really want to. So if you think about uh, our grandparents, how they grew up, what was their form of entertainment? It was sitting in front of a radio, listening to like the news or a story over radio. It was strictly auditory. Um, but what do kids do for entertainment today? They watch YouTube, they play video games. Yeah. So those are two like highly, highly visual mediums. There's actually a study that was done that says in the next seven years, 90% of the content we'll receive on our cell phones will be visual and not verbal. Just crazy, right? Because if you think about your first cell phone, what did you mostly do on it? You use it to talk, you use it to text. Those are um, just forms of communication that are not visual. Um, and now when I got my first cell phone, it was like a chocolate slide phone. I literally just like texted my mom and dad off of it. <laughs> but when I think about my phone now, what I'm doing on it, I spend a majority of my day looking at videos and photos and um, creating that content or I'm searching the web. Um, so it's not just talking on the phone anymore. And so why is teaching with images so effective? So number one, the majority of people are visual learners. So actually 60% of all people are visual thinkers. When we hear a word like fire engine, you guys just imagine a fire engine in your head. You're not thinking of it as just the word written out in your mind. You're thinking of an actual fire engine pictured in your head. 
Um, and if you want to connect with people, you need to use images, um, and it'll help them connect with what you're trying to say. So number two, pictures stick in people's minds. So studies have shown that people remember pictures better than they do words. And you actually process about a thousand messages a day in your head, which is kind of crazy to think, um, but digitally and personally. So essentially, if you want your message to stick, you want to use something to help differentiate from literally the thousands of other messages that you're processing throughout the day. And how you can do that is through visuals. And number three, people are highly responsive to images. So a picture really is worth a thousand words. Um, if you think of a sponsored ad, which is what we do a lot, um, it's not just the copy or the caption that's in the ad that's going to capture someone's attention. What draws you in when you're scrolling your Instagram or Facebook, even just on your personal feeds, is the photo or the video that's attached to the ad. And that's what's going to make you stop and then maybe read the caption. Um, but I have an example coming up. So I want you guys to look at this. What do you guys think when you see this photo? Yeah, <laughs> right? It, just, it looks like a nice, inviting, welcoming photo. You guys all smiled when you saw it. <laughs> So that's the point that we're trying to get across is when we're posting something on social media too, we want other people, outside people to see what we have to offer at Champions. And this picture is gonna make them stop and think, wow, it shows the training that we had last year. We had a business planning class. We have two agents that look how happy they look. Look how inviting and welcoming they look. Like who wouldn't wanna be a part of Champions, right? <laughs> so you see the photo first and then you see the caption. So the caption is kind of like a supporting role, but the visual is what really grabbed your attention. Um, so number four, images engage the creative and holistic parts of the brain. So who can tell me the difference between the left and the right brain? Creativity. Is which one? Uh, yeah, so creativity is the right brain, and then the left brain is more um, analytical and verbal. So the right brain is good at processing images and faces, um, and it just kind of helps see the more abstract parts of life and helps you see the bigger picture. So when you're using images to convey your message, it just helps your audience understand a little bit better. And number five, visuals tell stories in our imagination. So a picture can spark a new thought each time you look at it. So if I went back to the photo of Mario and Saul, you guys would have a different thought than what you initially thought the last time you saw it. So pictures help us tell stories, and if you want to engage the imagination of your audience, um, you can give them stats, but just remember what I just talked about was um, the visual will help them understand it and relate to it a bit more. So something like that is like a market update. Um, if I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see a market update, just like a graphic of numbers on the screen, I'm not as likely to just like stop and look at it. Um, but one of our agents, Gabby, does a really good way of putting a market update into a video that's really um, attention grabbing and it's going to make you stop and, stop and uh, look at it and see what she has to say. So. Is this a good market or a bad market? There's the transition. It depends on your it's local body. Let's take a look at Ontario, California. So let's compare pre pandemic, October 2019, to post pandemic, October 2022. It's a little bit more energetic. In October 2022, 63 homes hit the market with an average list price of 644000 dollars 9 homes closed escrow last month with an average list price of 627000 and an average sold price of 619000 with an average of 30 days on the market. But it's important to know that half of those homes or 40 homes closed in under 30 days. Let's talk about pre-pandemic time, October 2019, where 147 homes closed escrow with an average list price of four hundred and forty-four thousand so dollars, and an average sold price but it of four hundred and forty-three thousand. And again, an average of thirty days on market. So it kind of puts it into perspective that someone that maybe doesn't understand the real estate market of why those numbers that she was explaining were important. And it captures your attention. There's immediately a transition. You're like, oh, what is this video that I'm watching? Um, it's just the energy that she portrays and the music that's in it. It makes you want to stop and listen to what she's going to say. So there's three ways that you can put all of this into action in your marketing tactics. The first one being body movement, gestures, and facial expressions. You can use all of these things to enhance and emphasize what you're trying to say. And that's essentially what Gabby did in that video. Um, 
So it's just the energy that you're portraying. Um, if you're excited about something that you're talking about and you're doing the video, you're just standing up there, you're not moving, you're monotone, um, you're not really excited in your facial expressions, that's not gonna convey what you're trying to say that you're super excited about if you're just standing there not excited. <laughs> um, so the next one is word pictures. Word pictures engage both sides of the brain and bring us to greater levels of understanding and involvement. It's kind of what we talked about the left and right brain. So um, it is good to see like numbers, but then it's also good to see the visual and kind of like bring that whole picture together. Does anyone know what a word picture actually is? No. <laughs> picture with words. <laughs> so it's basically like a metaphor. It's really using descriptive words to kind of paint the picture of what you're trying to say. So it's not actually a visual. It's not the video. It's not the photo. It's using words to paint what you're trying to say. So an example of this is like property descriptions. So you guys do this all the time when you're writing out a property description to say what this house actually is, what it has to offer. So an example of this is Step into your own personal oasis with this stunning beachfront property. Imagine waking up to the gentle sound of the waves crashing on the shore and feeling the cool ocean breeze on your face as you sip your morning coffee on the spacious balcony. How amazing does that sound? Wow. Right? <laughs> I know, right? So you're not actually seeing the photo of the balcony or the cup of coffee overlooking the ocean, but you're imagining it in your head because of the descriptive words that I used. So the next one is obviously pictures and videos. Um, pictures and videos are powerful tools for conveying your message, and they can help capture the attention of your audience, and it really creates the emotional um, connection with your brand. So you wanna be sure to use visuals that align with your brand and messaging. Um, so I think this kind of means like, don't just post just to post something. Um, if it doesn't align with like who you are and your brand, you wanna be conscientious of what you're posting. That's what we do every day. Um, like, how is this video going to come across with what they're saying, or what is this caption going to uh, portray when they're reading it? So you want to be sure that you're aware of what you're posting. Um, and then you use visuals to help tell the story. So this can be adding a photo to your graphic instead of just posting like words on a screen or create videos, um, which we are always here to help you with. And then you can use visuals to showcase the benefits and features of what you have to offer. So an example of this would be a branding video. Um, I know Ursi has done one. I think a couple of other ones have done one. Um, but it just showcases like who you are, what you've done, what your experience is, and how you can help a potential client that's viewing this video. And then another way is to highlight customer testimonials. So customer testimonials are great anyways, even if it's just like written words, um, because you really want people to trust who you are and who they're working with. Um, but if you could add like a photo to the testimonial so people can see the family that's saying it. Or I know some people won't do this, but it doesn't hurt to ask. I think ursi has gotten a couple of video testimonials. So you never know what people will do um, because you've helped them. So they might be willing to help you in return and get that video. So people want to be engaged and entertained. The more you can do visually, the more most people will like it, the more they'll connect to it and the better communicator you will become. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to EJ to kind of explain a little bit more of how you can do that through storytelling. All right, let's do it up for Morgan. <laughs> so going off of Morgan and a lot of visual expression, it's one thing to have cool visuals, but it's also just important to have a story behind it. So who here has ever told a story? All right, it's a trick question. Almost everyone here should have a hand, right? <laughs> What's the first thing you guys do when you guys come in on Monday, right? You guys ask each other, what'd you do over the weekend? You know, took my daughter to the beach, hung out with my dog, argued with my girlfriend. You know, everyone's always <laughs> right? So, so you're never going to kill storytelling because it's built into the human plan. You come with it. You know, stories have been around since the beginning of time in cave paintings, etched in the stones, in the scrolls, and now we see it in today in like children's stories, TED Talks, podcasts, webinars, movies, right? So why do people tell stories? It's because it creates emotional responses, we picture who we aspire to be in the stories, and you know, we connect and feel with each other. So, um, a cognitive psychological, uh, a, a scientist basically estimates that people are 22 times more likely to remember a fact when it's wrapped in a story. 
Why? Because stories are memorable, they help us grab the gist of an idea, and they trigger an emotional response. And decades of research show that our brains are wired to remember well-told stories after, like, long after the facts grow old. So if you want to become an excellent communicator, you need to learn the law of storytelling because people want to see their own lives and stories. So the goals of this presentation is I want to get you guys to see how you can use storytelling to highlight unique features or selling points of a property, how you can share success stories or testimonials from past clients to build trust and credibility, and how you can use personal stories to connect with clients and build rapport. So the way we're going to be teaching you guys this, we're going to give you tools on characteristics of effective storytellers, uh, the formula to telling a good story, and how to share a story effective through the share method, which Justin will go over. So we're going to be talking about master storytellers. So who are master storytellers? Master storytellers are the person in your organization who holds your attention when they speak up. You know, someone you can count on to bring the, to dinner, someone who will be able to talk with everybody, you know, keep the energy alive. Or like a speaker, someone you see on a program that makes you want to go to that event. You know, the thing a lot of these people have in common is that they're able to deeply connect with their listeners and they do it through storytelling. Because the best salespeople, the most memorable leaders, the most engaging speakers, mentors, and teachers that we remember for a lifetime are often the best storytellers. So a lot of people think that storytelling is like something you're just born with, but it's actually a skill. It's a skill that can be learned. It's something you can improve on and utilize. And it's something you should approach as any other leadership developmental skill that you can hone in on. And so the goals of storytelling is you should be trying to get your audience to care about what happens in the story in a deep way. And the law of storytelling is about winning the hearts of your audience. So there's a lot of different types of stories, right? You could tell a happy story, a sad story, funny story, sentimental story, all these different types of stories. And you know, a lot of these stories, some of them will have messages, sometimes some of them are just to entertain. But the one thing in common they all have is that they captivate their listener. So now we're gonna be talking about the characteristics of effective storytellers. So the first two I think are the most important. Number one is enthusiasm. They love what they were doing and express themselves with joy and vitality, right? You guys are more likely to incline to listen to someone who's passionate about the story they're telling. Animation, the presenter exhibited lively facial expressions, expressions, movement, and gestures, you know. You don't want to listen to someone who's not even interested in their own story, right? If I was up here and I was just kind of just reading this, like, word for word, you know, not really moving my hands around, you guys would just be bored. Okay? Audience participation, nearly every storyteller involved the audience in some way asking listeners to sing, clap, repeat phrases, or mimic gestures. A good example of this would be like Tony Robbins, you know, he has people do like their chants and stuff like that, get everybody pumped up. Memory, they remember all their stories without notes, which allow them to make eye contact, maintain eye contact. You know, you guys are more likely to listen to someone when they're actually looking at you as opposed to someone who's just reading off a piece of paper. Laughter, they use humor even in serious and sad stories. Um, you know, a good example of this would be like comedians, you know, literally their whole comedy routine is literally just all stories, right? Creativity, they told classic themes using fresh perspectives. I don't think you guys will have a problem with this because you guys are all unique. You guys have stories that are unique to yourselves, so you guys shouldn't have a problem with that. And then immediacy, they told most stories in the first person. Uh, you should be just telling most stories in the first person. And then heartwarming, their stories made everyone feel good for having heard them. So I think that's very important because, you know, you want to leave an impression on whoever you're telling your story to and you want to, you know, just leave them with good feelings. So you don't need to look impressive telling stories. Your goal should be to help the listener see themselves in your story. Tell stories with the purpose of connecting with others and put the focus on listeners. So how do you connect? So this is a quote by Maya Angelou where she's actually quoting somebody else, but there's a, snow, uh, there's a statement by Terence, I am a human being, nothing human can be alien to me. Human beings should understand how their other humans feel no matter what they, where they are, no matter what their language or culture is, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if, you develop, <laughs> if you develop the art of seeing more alike than we are unalike, 
Which stories are So, you know, think about it. We're literally all human beings. We all laugh, cry, face problems, succeed, fail, and have hopes and dreams. So an example of this was, I think like a year or two ago, uh, we were supposed to read the book, Who Moved My Cheese? And at first I was like, I don't want to read this book, you know, like, I, I don't know how we to relate to a, like a story about like a, like mice in a maze trying to chase cheese. But then when I read it, it was, it was a book about pride, ego, perseverance, being motivated and just adapting to change. And I was like, oh. You know, I it's like a book that everybody has to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, this is a really great book. So, <laughs> so now we're going to talk about what constitutes a story. So like we all have stories we want to tell, and then sometimes you know we might find ourselves like explaining details we don't have to, or like we might be completely missing the point. This formula will basically help you just like hone in on what like the story is supposed to be about, right? So we have a hero. Every story has a hero who is a main character. It can be anyone or anything, and your goal is to help your audience identify with them. The goal is the objective the hero is aiming to achieve or reach. The conflict is the obstacle or challenge that the hero faces trying to reach their goal. And the resolution is what happens to the hero after the conflict is resolved. So we'll do an example. Everyone knows the little engine that could, right? So he, the hero is the little engine. The goal is he's trying to make it over the hill to deliver toys. Conflict is the difficulty of getting up the hill. And the resolution is he just chugs along, makes it over the hill, and delivers the toys. You know, you can use stories for any purpose to prove a point, illustrate an idea, teach a process, or move your audience emotionally. So we have our own little story about. Oh my God. Just a little quick story. Her goal is to lose 25 pounds. <laughs> her conflict is I, during lunch, I go out to go buy burgers, fries, soda, candy, sweets, and all Literally every day. <laughs> and then the resolution Justin makes me eat outside. <laughs> So, you know, it's not a true story, okay? It's not a true story. <laughs> so the ability to tell a story effectively is really, is really a matter of attitude. If you tell a success story for the purpose of bragging, it will come off as egotistical, you know. So you want to tell stories that, of your own struggles and mistakes. So because it will humble you and help others. So when you tell a story, always try to put your audience in your shoes, give them a chance to live the story with you which makes them the hero of the story. So it's not about you guys, it's about them. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Justin. He's gonna talk about how to share a story. Yes, he is. Okay. How to share a, uh, share a story effectively. So picking back, it, me and EJ have pretty much the same chapter and he's combining, we just did our presentations together. So it's piggybacking off what EJ is and how to share it. But sharing is not, what you think of instructions of A to B. It's John Maxwell's acronym, SHARE, to why to tell a story, okay? And we go deeper into the story and using emotions, using uh, your relationship with people. But first, I am going to uh, show is S, H is help, A is amplify, R is relate, and E is enjoy. Um, there's a video that I'd like to share. Uh, I'm sorry, Erskine, I'm going to show your brand name video that we did two years ago. Uh, I think it was a great video. We thought, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that now, I'm going to this clip. Surprise. <laughs> so we did a brand name video for Erskine two years ago, and I was talking to the team, and we're all talking about, like, what's a good video that checks off all of these boxes? Show, help, amplify, relate, enjoy. And after the video, we'll go into each, uh, each word. But I think that we thought that Erskine's video checked off all the boxes. So here's the video. Sorry, put it in the Sorry. bad category. <laughs> what not to do. Being a realtor for over 30 years, I love what I do, and I have a passion for helping people. 
I still get excited when I get a listing, as if it was my very first one. I have a true passion for my profession. Helping people achieve their goals is very important to me. Listening to my clients, giving them options, solutions, problem solving is all part of my job. My years of experience and dedication helping people have given me an established referral base. 95% of my clients are referrals or past clients. Many of my past clients call me when they have a real estate question. Whether I've helped them a few years ago or last month, they know they can count on me. I am also probate certified. Working with attorneys for many years, I have understood the process. Moving out of California or in, I am well versed in relocation. I serve the Orange County, Los Angeles County, and Inland Empire. Whether you are thinking of selling property or purchasing, I am here to help. Experience plus dedication equals Ursi, your real estate resource. So you guys enjoyed that video, obviously. You guys related to her because you guys are all business professionals. Uh, she amplified what she was saying in there. She wanted to help her clients. She showed emotion. She cared. Um, it just checked off all the boxes. Like, that was a really, really good video. And we still go back to it two years ago. I hope you're still using it. Yeah, I know. I'm going that again, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so... That video was perfect. I think that was a great one. Everybody's great videos in here. I'm not saying you're not. It was just the one that checked off and hit our brain. Okay. I don't want anybody. My video's better, Justin. No. I don't want that. Right. Uh, everybody's videos are great. Um, but share is the tool that John Maxwell uses. All right. So in here, who shares reels and TikToks? I'm guilty too. Raise your hand. Everybody should raise your hand. I hear it all the time. Walk down the hallway. Oh my God, you showed me that TikTok last night. <laughs> Everybody should be raising their hands, right? Um, what types of reels do you guys share? Is it funny, motivational, inspirational, no cheese miss? <laughs> all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> okay, we're in a generation of watching, creating, and sharing stories on these devices that we carry on every day. Uh, when we are creating, um, I will, and I'll be going over the share. Sorry, I'll confuse my notes right now. Okay, so what do you want them to see in here? What is the essence of the story you want to tell? Memorable storytelling is a combination of what you say and how you say it. One of your storytelling goals is to have your audience care. Back to EJ's presentation, you have to care before your audience cares, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's goal here is to help a seller, buyer, or help with finances. And we are all professionals. We all have professional skills and need to help someone. You as business professionals care about what you do because you wouldn't be doing what you are doing. As realtors, you are the answer. To, you answer questions to first time home buyers that has no clue what is going on because you care. You repeat your answers to questions that you said a dozen times because you care, right? Um, our ladies at the front, Ashley, you deal with realtors all every day because you guys care. Jennifer built this beautiful empire because she cares. Um, if you don't care, then your audience is not going to care what your content is saying. So you guys are all great business professionals and you guys all care. That's all I'm saying. How we tell the stories, uh, how we how will telling the story help them? You always want an audience to have a takeaway from any story you tell. What do you want your audience listeners to do? Think or feel when they've heard your voice. The better you align your stories to the purpose of your presentation, the greater the impact they will have. Everyone's goal here is to help a seller, buyer. The content of the videos that we create always need a takeaway for our clients. Okay, so we create, we help you guys create videos or you guys do it on your own. What type of feeling do you want your audience to feel? There's no wrong answer. So yeah, what do you want to make them when you when you make your videos? Excited. Well, James, trust you. James, you make a lot of videos. What do you want your audience to feel? Uh, happy, intrigued. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Call me warm. Call you. Okay. Call me. Informed. Informed. Yeah, informed. Perfect. So those are all right answers. No wrong answer. Uh, in our business, you want them to feel like they trust you, and they're well educated, and of course, always make them feel excited about what they're going to do. 
right? You don't want to be sad and be like, yeah, the market is down. Oh, well. Move on from <laughs> right? Like, you want them to trust you. That's all it is. And the best storytellers always trust, right? Um, all the great speakers that do TED Talks or have conferences, um, Tony Robbins, who else? John Maxwell. <laughs> who do we have? Tom Ferry. Tom, Tom Ferry. Ferry. Um, they're all great storytellers, and they can control the crowd. They can do hand movements, but they're all great storytellers. And we all want to listen to them, right? They wouldn't be doing their job if we didn't want to listen to them. Buyers will listen. Okay, so I'm going to share a video by Joe and Madison team. Um, they're part of West Covina. Uh, they came to us, and they're like, hey, we want to do videos. Um, educational videos, and we're like, perfect. And I, we didn't know that how great of script writers they were. They're great storytellers, right? They gave, they gave us the scripts, and we're like, wow, this is very informative. Um, so he breaks down in this video of different types of properties, right? Uh, so we just talked about trust, educated, excited. If I was a person that was one buying a house and I saw this video, I think it would be very trustworthy. Buyers were looking for homes. You may wonder what's the difference between a single family residence, condo, townhome, and a HUD. Well, a single family residence is a standalone home that sits on its own plot of land. You have exclusive rights to both the land and the building. This offers the ultimate in privacy and flexibility in modifying it to your preferences. A condominium, you own a specific unit within the larger building. The exterior and the common areas are maintained and owned by the HOA or Homeowners Association. You pay a monthly fee for maintenance and shared amenities from a pool, clubhouse, gym. Fees also vary. Townhome is a multi-level attached residential building that shares one or more walls to an adjacent unit. You own both the interior and exterior of the unit. You also pay an HOA. Pine Unit Developments, or PUDs, is a mix of housing of the three types I already mentioned, which include apartments, commercial, and even open spaces like parks. You own the individual unit, the land, and sometimes a portion of the common areas. PUDs usually have an HOA to manage and maintain all these amenities. We can give you a more detailed explanation on each type of property that we mentioned if you use a call at the Joy Madison team. So he broke down every type of property. You feel trusted, you're educated. I didn't know what a PUD was. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is great. So you can you implement these types of videos, but they're doing it in their own unique way, right? So you can only imagine how many realtors that come to us and ask for a video. And they're pretty much the same video, but you guys all have different styles. You guys think about that? Yeah. You guys are pretty much saying the same thing that the other realtors doing it, but you guys have your own different type of styles because you have your own audiences. Amplify. What do I want them to imagine? Stories have a way to potentially help people dream, explore, expand their lives, and expand their lives. You have to put yourself in a beginner's mindset. In a beginner's mindset, there are many possibilities. In an expert's mind, there are few. I think that's a great quote. Right. Mm -hmm. um, let's think about the person that phone makes a phone call, calls a realtor, like, oh my God, I want to buy this house, million dollars. Uh, they're so excited about it. But then you, as the expert, you're like, I checked your credit score. <laughs> I checked your finances. This is not happening, right? Because you are the expert. Then you you will break it down for them. So I think that's a great quote. Awesome. Um, your imagination can fuel your audience's imagination. Imagination has given us to compensate for what we are not and the sense of humor to console us for what we are. Find ways to expand both for people and help them engage their higher aspirations. Relate to your audience. You may have been in the industry for 20 years, but your clients has no clue what you're talking about. When you create content, make sure you put yourself in a beginner's mindset and think about what they would think about. Relate. What do I want them to feel? All people are emotional. If you want to tell a connecting story, put your emotions into it. Don't be afraid to tell people that you care about what you're talking about. Storytelling is built on humanity. It connects with others when it contains emotion. Okay, what is everyone watching right now? Movie, show, what did you recently watch? <coughs> I've lost 
Who knows? Catfish. Catfish? Catfish? I'm a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a reality show. Uh, That's really emotional. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but every show, movie has an emotion to it, right? Excited, sad, happy, angry. What did I just watch? Um, there's all types of emotions, right? Why can't you guys put that into your videos? Have emotions, right? Relate to them. Right now, it's a bad market. Maybe they don't want to buy a home, but relate. Create content to relate to them. Like, okay, you know, like we do understand that these interest rates are so high, uh, but maybe in a couple months you can give me a call back and I'll give you information towards those couple months when I make you a call back. And now you have customers for the future and not now, right? So you have to relate to them so they can understand because caring is important. Justin, 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 it's a good market. I was oh, going to say that. that I know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, not, I'm using a video forms. Oh. <laughs> video forms. It's a good market. It's a good market. It's a good market, but for the ones that are saying no, they're scared. They're scared. Feeling scared. Yeah. 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 But, so I got this example because a lot of realtors are telling me like, oh, my buyer's scared. They backed out. Mm -hmm. Other realtors are like, oh, this one backed out because they're scared. So I use that example for that. But yes, it is a good one. How can I make the story fun and unforgettable? Try to make your story you're telling exciting and fun because joy is contagious. Somebody once said laughter is like a windshield wiper. It doesn't stop the rain, but it helps us, helps us keep going. Do your best to find ways to incorporate humor into your speaking and especially in your stories because humor can do so many things to improve your communication. You can get your point across with less verbiage. If you're naturally funny, use that skill when you tell stories. If you're not, then find ways to have fun. It'll make your presentation fun for your audience. So everybody shares the funny reel or funny TikTok because laughing is fun, right? If I came in here and we didn't laugh inside of there and we're, we're creative, so we have to laugh and have fun with what we do because if it doesn't then you guys are going to get boring content every single day <laughs> we didn't have fun with it um but who shared who always who what's a funny TikTok that somebody shared recently anybody want to share everybody's got to have a funny TikTok. come on I know, you're laughing David. i just saw what you did yesterday that was funny oh yeah so yeah i saw you yesterday too <laughs> But yeah, see, this <laughs> I didn't see this morning. I didn't see this morning. But Sonia's a great example, right? So, or and James too. So you guys create like informative, educational videos, but then you guys you guys digress and have fun with it, still, right? Because people don't want to get sold stuff every day, like sell, sell. So we get sold every, something every single day, right? So laughter is always a good thing in any content you create because people will enjoy that. Um, James, I'm going to use your video that we did last week for Cinco de Mayo. Oh, uh, has anybody seen the part of me falling out the chair? <laughs> <laughs> so, James came to us and he wanted to do a Cinco de Mayo video. He showed us like his past video that he did, and then we we created the one we just recently did for Cinco de Mayo. That's a good laugh. Let's talk about Cinco de Mayo and what May 5th really represents. James, <laughs> 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 let's get right into it. I'm shooting a video here, man. What's going on? Do you really know what Single the Mile is all about? I'll bet the people know right now. Do you know what it means? Okay. Single the Mile is a yearly celebration held on May 5th, which commemorates the anniversary of Mexico's victory over the Second French Army at the Battle of Puebla in 1862. Tell me more. I'll plan on it. Just listen. <laughs> the victory over the French army was a morale boost for the Mexicans. Wow, I never knew that. I thought it was just celebrating food, family, liquor, and a good time. I didn't know it was because the Mexican army defeated the French from trying to colonize them. The noise after battle, man. <laughs> I'm Senior Jaime from Rigas Champion. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to seeing you in Escrow soon. Happy single divine. Happy single divine. <laughs> Tell everybody laughed. Everybody enjoyed that. Yeah. No, that's still going. So laughter is a great way to create content. Um, it doesn't always have to be so serious, educational. You can always have fun with it as well. If you're not having fun creating content, then it becomes a job, and then and your content starts to be that, be boring, and like not fun anymore, right? Um, 
In conclusion, we encourage you to use stories every time you speak and be bold about it. Nothing makes a story go flat more quickly than the timid delivery. If you're going to tell a story, be engaging and energetic. Become a great storyteller because people see their own lives in stories. That's the law of storytelling. Everybody in here is a great storyteller, and everybody has their own story to tell in your own way. Uh, everybody cares in this building. Everybody loves in this building. Everybody inspires others in this building, and that's your story. We appreciate you guys coming to our class. We all want to see you next week. Yeah, are you taking questions? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Class that we're going home. <laughs> Justin, on the on the real the YouTube short, yeah. I hear often with marketing that you should keep it at a minute, but the one that you show when I get the team at from Liz's office, he was very informative. Did that one go over a minute? That's uh, so Instagram is 90 seconds. Okay. Uh YouTube is 90 seconds, I believe, too. Okay, as well. got it. Last time I it's always changing. Okay. So they were like trying to test yeah. out 10 minutes and then now they're doing 90 seconds. So, so 90 seconds is 90 seconds. what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, if you get all your information out less than a minute, that's even better. Gotcha. Because okay. is somebody going to sit and watch their 90 no. minutes? Right. If, you, if I don't grab your attention in three seconds of the video, then I'm scrolling. Okay. Right. So it's got to be an instant. Like, um, market's about to crash. Someone's gonna watch that video quick. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't get millions of views. Right. Exactly. So uh, that first three seconds, you should in every movie or show, I said this before, in every movie or show, the problem or the conflict is in the beginning of the story. Because you won't be attracted to that movie. Right. Next movie or show you watch, the conflict's in the very beginning. First five minutes of that movie, the conflict's already there. I'm gonna save the world. I'm gonna fix the world. <laughs> and so I, I just thought about like Marvel or something. But the, the problem the problem's in the first five minutes. So in a 90 second short or real, you got three seconds to get that attention. That hope that answer. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? Anything about marketing? <laughs> How, one more question. Yeah. <laughs> how can we, if we do, when we come to you for video, because you guys are so talented, how can we incorporate that. that with the, the programs that we already have, KV Core or our website, things like that? Can we put that in our description, put it in our bio? How can we use both of those together to help us get more business? Um, I think just utilize the videos in KV Core. Okay. Since KV Core is the like automatic responding to clients, um, you can incorporate the videos and content that you do into KV Core. Um, so you don't necessarily need to promote like you're using KV Core to your clients because they're going to be like, what? Like, I don't care how you're contacting other people. Um, but incorporate all of the content that you do create with us into your um, your systems. Yeah. I'll fall back. When is the next KV Core class? Next Tuesday. Week, Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yeah. Everybody's gonna be there? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so you can add these videos that you create. So we can help you create videos to, we want videos to be timeless, right? You don't want to date it. You don't want it to, um, just, you don't want to date it because if you date it, then you can't reuse that video. Your videos that you guys create in the past, like your banding video two years ago, that video is not, it's, you still use it to yeah. this day, right? So information that doesn't have, hasn't changed yet, or if it did change, it created a new video. But it's the information that you created the video for and hasn't changed, reuse it, right? These big marketers or social media influencers, they reuse their videos, right? They know the timing. Okay, I'm going to post at 8 o'clock. I'm not getting any views on that. I'm going to post at 9. Boom, the second video at 9 o'clock got millions of views right. because of timing, right? And they use the same videos, guys. Like, don't get it. Because like, now the algorithm is not um, in order. Oh, chronological. No. Chronological. Yeah, chronological, yeah. So the algorithm is how many engagement and, and, and impressions you're getting from that video. Okay. Back, we, everybody wants their chronological order back, right? Mm -hmm. But they, it's just they don't make money off of that. So now, if you repost a video, they're not going to know when you posted it. Right? Could be. What's the best day to post? What days? Uh, Fridays and weekends are kind of bad because a lot of entertainment is happening on the weekend. So like sporting events or fights or stuff like that, that gets eaten up on the weekends. Uh, Fridays are bad. Everybody's tuned out on Fridays. Uh, Monday mornings, afternoons, 
Uh, Tuesdays in the afternoon. Afternoons are pretty pretty much across the board. Monday through Thursday is probably the best time because everybody's on lunch and they're scrolling. Uh, Monday mornings are best. That's why your emails are flooded with a bunch of ads. If you guys think about that. So look at your emails. That's the best timing um, to know when to post a video because everybody is scrolling through all of their routines in the morning with their phone, emails, um, social media, whatever, Instagram, whatever um, you whatever you do in the morning is pretty much time. So if you're picking up your phone in the morning, like when you roll over, brush your teeth, whatever, however, and you pick up your phone, it's probably the best time you should post because you're scrolling already. So that should have your schedule, but it always changes, right? It's going to, I'm going to tell you this today and then tomorrow going to be like the weekends are the best day. <laughs> it's always changing like it's forever changing social media is never it's always in beta it's never going to be finalized it's always going to improve how did you have to do the two at the same time this, this thing? camera <laughs> magic it's very yeah. that was it's it didn't even look. you have to yeah it's it's you should like behind the scenes of that like oh, that's pretty cool so yeah, you can have oh this has one this one has a, a twin my twin your twin <laughs> I had like triplet because then another Elizabeth comes up at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah, three of these. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> oh, and I, I suggest, if you're not using stories, use stories. If you haven't already, I know everybody here uses stories, but stories is probably the best, um, the best way to market. Okay, like the post anymore is kind of going away because everybody rather look at stories. I know I do it. For example, I look at stories before I even scroll my page, and then when I'm bored of stories, then I scroll. Okay. That's why stories are so popular. But they go away after. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Twenty-four yeah. hours. Yeah, you can archive. There yeah, you can archive, archive them. But yeah, stories are the best ways. I know a lot. Which What's your guys' way to do it? Stories first before it's scrolling. Um, I look at stories. I look at stories personally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah stories. Are, because that's at the moment. Like yeah. I can post. Mm -hmm. I can have a long caption, and I'm not. No one's gonna see it till two days later, a day later, whatever it is. But if I post it on my story. People are going to immediately look at that. Okay. So can you do both the story and the Yeah, post? so a lot of people were doing that. What we do is someone like, uh, if Remax posted something on the actual thread, then we share on the story. Uh, but be creative. There's so many ways you can do it. Yeah. I just want to mention something. I, I took a class with Tom Ferry. Okay. And he mentioned our hope this information hub. Uh, some of the yeah. Yeah. Uh, you you can share the story uh night a uh, morning and night so that way you you be like if you forget to do the next day you know you still have something going on for 24 yeah. hours yeah that's and that then makes sense. the best i learned from that class too that the best time for you to post or do a video if you want to really call attention from people is a lunch time between 12 to 1 p.m because everybody got a lunch and what do they do? They eat it, but they're still they're, watching. They're so I just wanted to share that, so, and I've been doing that, and, and I get it. it's working. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. So she's basically saying post it in the morning time because it's a, the story is only 24 hours. So she posted one at uh, in the morning at night, and if you miss it, you'll be able to see it the next day still because it's in the 24-hour cycle. Right. So that's a good way to do it. Are stories better than reels? Um. They're just different. Whatever your flavor is for that day, you know, like <laughs> reels is a time. I don't know. I like to watch reels and TikToks when I'm at home, I'm not doing anything. Like I'm like calming down. down. Yeah, downtime exactly. Um, stories is like a quick. I'm gonna go through and see what everybody's doing. Um, I feel like stories is more behind the scenes. Yeah, you can share um, your feed post so people also see it in stories. Um, but reels are a little more like produced. You like took time to record something that's not just like in the moment, hey, I'm here at this house, I'm gonna post it, and then it's gonna be gone in 24 hours. I think stories are a little more real, yeah. Everybody, you can give me in your car, um, it's in real time, <laughs> yeah. Then you could, you could also take that story and download it and then still post it on your feed, yeah. 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 You know too. There's so many ways to do these things, yeah, there's so many, but that's a great way to do it. No. So, Justin, how I do a lot of the stories mm -hmm. or the reels, and I add music. But if I'm doing a video and I'm talking, the music, is there, how do I turn the music down? 
Yeah. 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 Facebook. Facebook? Yeah. And it goes to Instagram. I'm not sure about Facebook. Does Facebook have Yeah, you can just well, Facebook. 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 Facebook.